sensation feels good. Barbara has such a soothing voice. You can see his paintings too. If you put this on, mm -hmm. would you like to? Shall okay. I place it? Okay. Yeah. And you start to play with the ears. And you can start to understand, like, this is a microphone that brings in basically sound from the left and over from the right. And this is a kind of device that's used by ASM artists to create this sort of binaural 360 degree sound. But also, for a lot of ASM artists, the triggers that they often want to create include ear cleaning, ear touching, you know, and the kind of these sort of sensual aspects that I think are very primordial. You know, I think it goes back to to when we're babies. Our kind of ability to to perceive that kind of close feeling, that softness, yeah. that gentleness, and so this is a microphone that actually mimics the human ear canal and creates as close to a realistic sound as possible that took place in the US called Hello Again. Mm. And it just as an object is so interesting because it's doing something similar to, to this Zennheiser piece. But the fact that the ears, the eyes are ears, you know, and the fact that this was picking up sound from multi-directions, it starts to make you wonder quite how the future human will look like, you know, or like what, what, kind, of, what kind of direction we're, we're heading in. The fact that it looks like a, that it looks like a human head, it sort of mimics almost prosthetically, but differently, I find pretty unique. But this object is oof, I so happy. It's here. interesting that a lot of the um, young girls doing this are quite glamorous and they wear lots of makeup and they look quite young. Oh, do you think there's something in that? When you dive into it, I think that definitely what you can perceive from the way that people talk about ASMR mm. is that it's one particular type of person, but it's not. It's everybody. I mean, I've come across, I mean, from my position, it's fairly gender equal. Mm -hmm. It's pretty beautifully spread around the world. Mm -hmm. And it's people coming from all sorts of backgrounds. Mm -hmm. Whispering Life, who is in her 30s, and she was the very first ASM artist. Uh, she's based in the UK. She's an optician. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, optician, when we've, when we've been to the optician, that kind of closeness and that care and attention that you receive, yeah. it's very close to the yeah, idea that ASMR is, yes. is, yeah, yeah. is trying to replicate. It's yeah. that kind of closeness of touch through sound, yeah. through movement it, and through focus. It's kind of making ordinary things extraordinary, isn't Precisely. it? Precisely. That's like exactly a, what's yeah. happening. Yeah. But, you know, at the same time, I think there are definitely questions that any internet movement, as it starts to grow, you know, it starts to fragment and split and there are subgenres. And we're at that point with mm. ASMR. But I think there is a lot of emotional labor that goes into to making ASMR. Mm. And when you talk to, when I've talked to different ASMR artists, you know, some of them do get to a point where they have to take a break for a couple of weeks because they're providing care and attention on demand to potentially millions of people. Yeah. But what are they getting in return for that, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think in that sense, it is a product of the internet, both the good sides and the troubling sides. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You can go into the studio and try it for yourself. ASMR is said to be one of the most interesting and friendly communities online. The deepest state of relaxation.